YouTube crew, what is going on and welcome back. Now today we're actually taking a look at some viewer submitted gameplay and breaking that down as opposed to breaking down my own gameplay. And I wanna quickly talk about why I'm doing this and why I think it's beneficial. I'm super hopeful that you'll be able to take a lot away from me breaking down the gameplay of somebody who's similar caliber to you, whose gameplay probably looks very similar to the way yours does, and of course somebody who probably makes the same mistakes as you do. So I'm hopeful that you'll be able to take a lot away from this video that you can apply to your gameplay to get more kills. Now, as always, if you find this video helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Let's go hashtag viewer down in the comments below for the algorithm. And if you are looking to continue getting better at Warzone, make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell turned on so that you don't miss any videos. Let's get into it. So I wanna do a quick rundown of who we're actually watching. We're watching Deep Dish Jane here, who is one of my mods on stream on Twitch. If you aren't following on Twitch, make sure you go hit that follow button. But He's got a 1.29 KD, he's got about 100 wins on Rebirth, and he is on console. I'm going to be highlighting good and bad things that he does, again, in hopes that you'll be able to take some things away. So, as you can see, they do land Bio, and he sees that person fly in. So, he knows there's at least one person with them here. Now, one thing I do want to point out, and I talked about this in my movement video, I would love to see him slide canceling more. Playing a little bit quicker you know especially with a pistol he doesn't have a gun in this situation so he really needs to find a gun so at now he's got the type 63 and he does have the heartbeat that he can use to his advantage now i do want to point out one thing that he does really well here and i talk a lot about floor we right so he grabs the type 63 he looks at the the em2 here and he goes i don't want that don't be afraid to go past the gun if you don't know what it is or in the case of the EM2, it is so slow to ADS, it's okay to not pick it up and just roll with the Type 63 and the OTS-9 here. Um, so don't feel like you have to pick up every single gun. At this point, he does have Heartbeat. Like I said, he's got two that way. And he's going to push over this way. They do have enough for loadout. So they should be buying, and this isn't on Dayton here, this is more on uh, Fortnite Boy, that they should be buying loadout immediately. So that's a pretty easy kill right there. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the kill himself, so he doesn't get that UAV to his advantage. Uh, gets shot in the back here, but he's going to go ahead. Let's see what he does. Played up. He's going to reposition upstairs. Great job there in terms of keep moving. He's going to reposition. And he's going to play a different angle. That time he does get it, so now he sees the red ping. He immediately pushes, and he's able to hit those shots. So that's a pretty easy kill. It's a great job of how he uses his minimap. Notice he got the full kill on the guy. He took a look at the minimap. He saw that the person was on the same level, and then he went and pushed that person, ultimately able to get the kill. So is Fortnite Boy going to buy? Okay, Fortnite Boy dropped money. So now Dayton can buy loadout. And I am going to be doing, there's one really big thing in particular I'm going to be highlighting throughout this gameplay. And I'm going to do on a, a video on it soon. And you'll notice right here, they're going to buy Lodi. They've got Lodi. Now they're in a really good spot. Minus that one person being down. But he has heartbeat. He's got a good sense of where that person is. They're, they're going to go ahead and revive there. Still looking. Now at this point, they should be pushing that person. They should be figuring out where that person is and immediately pushing. This is what I'm talking about. Pushing with a purpose and understanding. They have enough money for plates. They have enough money for a UAV, and they're, they haven't bought one yet. So right in this situation, they're just roaming around out in the open. They're not totally sure where they should be going. They're rotating with circle, obviously. They're pushing in a circle, but a UAV here would be absolutely clutch in terms of understanding where people are. You might have people top prison and want to push that way. You may have people control, which is what you're going to see, and want to push this way, but they really have no idea where anybody actually is. And that's where I talk about playing with a plan, right? Playing and having information. Right now, they're only going on what they can see, except they have enough money to to buy a UAV. And, and at this point, they have enough money to buy two UAVs. So that's just one thing that I really want to be highlighting is what is their plan, actually? Because I, like I said, I feel like a lot of players that struggle just don't really have a plan. It's, it's, not, it's not that they can't execute. It's that they don't know what to do. So I want to point this out here. Just absolutely fantastic shots by Dayton. Um, he played it a little bit more patient, made sure that guy didn't move. So now he knows he can get this thirst. And what you're going to see here as this rolls is they're just going to rack up 
them being the team, but specifically Dayton, is just in a great spot in terms of positioning. So go ahead and use your UAV. He's going to see one down here. Of course, great live ping there by Purple. So Dayton's going to go ahead and shoot. Oh, he's going to get the Thirst. Again, the Thirst gives you the minimap. Even if you don't down him, it's who thirsts him. So when you thirst, pay attention to your minimap. So he sees this person rotating this way. And he's, gonna, he's just holding circle right now. Again, thirsting right there. Now he knows there's another person in this little shack here. Immediately focuses. So now he has a little bit of intel, right? Now as he's thirsting people... He understands where people are, and now you can see him execute. He's executing and doing what he has to do. And again, it's just going to keep happening. Enemy flying in. Good job there. Look, if you have to hip fire the AR, I think hip fire AR, the spread is just way too close. But that's besides the point. Does what he has to do there. Kind of takes, takes care of it. And let's talk about one thing here. Let's take a quick look at uh, the, the actual lobby breakdown. We have 10 teams. 30 people, 4 kills. Still a very healthy lobby. Still opportunity to put up a lot of kills here. A lot of times the biggest difference... I, I think it's two things. The biggest difference between high kill players and people that struggle is pace and movement. I think those are... He's going to catch this guy out in the open. Again, look at the shots. Immediately turns... That's, that's just a fantastic job by Dayton right there. Watch the flick right here. Watch the flick, and let me, let me before we jump into this, let me say one thing. Console players, because of your FOV, I hear you. I, I get it. I know you want FOV. I wish, I wish I could give it to you, but I can't. From what I understand, it has something to do. I'm not even going to go into it. Point is, you're stuck on your FOV. It's okay to play a little bit further away and not play right on top of everybody. Um, there were a few scenarios that I'll point out where I'm like, I, I wish Dayton had pushed, but... Ultimately, with the lower FOV, I understand the hesitancy. You can easily have your camera broken by somebody who's on PC with really good movement. So, playing at... He's he's not far enough that he can't hit his shots, right? He's only 30 meters. You'll see him melt this first guy. Immediately snap to the second, right? So, he's going to get that down. Unfortunately, lets that guy get away. But again, now he's got the minimap to his advantage. He still understands where people are. This is about one scenario where I'm like, I wish... I wish he would push in here. Wish he would push in. He knows one's down to the left. He knows one's in the green. And that's kind of where he gets caught peeking a little bit over the edge. Now, gas is not moving right now. Just take note of that. We still have 30 seconds till gas moves. So he knows one's over there. And he's just, I mean, look, he is playing high ground. But part of getting higher kill games is going to be starting to push these situations and being a little bit more confident. So he's got that guy there. I, again, he's just he's just absolutely hitting his shots. And you see the difference when, well, that guy's rotating up. Again, hitting shots down, really connecting with, with just enough in that scenario. Um, he missed a few, but he hit enough to down that guy. Now, this is another situation where I want him to go push in. And you see the difference, like that first kill that he got in this little two-piece right here. The guy didn't have a chance to go back down the stairs. That's the difference that actually makes. So again, wish he would just push a little bit. He knows that one's down. He knows the one's down, and he knows these people. He's got a few down here, but this is map knowledge. From this angle right here, you can get up the stairs this way, or you can get up the zip behind. So he should have everybody that he needs on, on heartbeat. Again, that guy's pushing in, connecting with shots. But this is where I want him to now push. This is where I want him to now push. And that's what happens. You get caught a little bit too long in a certain spot. And he ends up getting he ends up getting uh, sniped. One shot, headshot, and then, of course, clustered. He's going to end up dying in this situation. And then we'll fast forward to, to when he revives. But that's where I just wish he would have pushed a little bit when he had those people down. But again, we have eight kills. We have 18 people up, so still a good game here. Well, I just gave away that. So he lands back in. Fortunately, that guy on the roof has a gun because now that team rotated and took his positioning that he was in. So he's going to go ahead and die here again, trying to land back on his stuff. That's okay. Got to go into a little bit of a regain here. We've got 12 seconds left, 10 seconds on this, this person uh, until Dayton comes back. But that's where, going back, I just wish a little bit of aggressive, aggressiveness probably would have helped him out a lot in that scenario. 
So now he's back in. We get we still have 20 people up. So again, we're still on a really good game here. And he's going to go see what he can find. Unfortunately, right now, he can only get the RPG. And I actually didn't catch what he spawned back in with. The striker. The striker. So looking for something else. I mean, if you spawn in with the Fennec, you're in a really good spot. Uh, if you spawn in with the Uzi, you're in a pretty good spot. If you spawn in with the striker... Uh, you're a little bit out of luck. That's just tough, and you should probably find a different gun. So he does find the stoner here. Now, this is one where you're a little bit, you know, you don't really have many options, especially late game. So this is where you do want to try to be a little bit, you know, better about being comfortable with floor loot. You know, for me personally, I am very comfortable with the stoner because I've used it a bunch. So for me, finding a stoner late game, I'm confident that I can at least somewhat challenge and Hold my own against the team with loadout. So let's see what he does here. We have uh, 14 seconds until the third circle closes. So this is going to go back down again in a weird spot here. They don't have enough for loadout. They do have enough for UAV. So UAV could be tempting here to get a sense of where people actually are. No plan, right? There is no plan right now besides hold circle and hope. Right? They don't really have a plan in terms of pushing anybody. They don't have a plan in terms of where people actually are. So they're they're not in control of this lobby right now. They're just trying to hope and see what happens. They do have good positioning. That's the one thing that they do have going for them is they have good positioning. But they could be doing a little bit more. Could buy plates. right? Even buying plates real quick. There's a few different ways you could go about it. They can afford two sets of plates, make sure everybody's full plated. So at least they have a chance when they fight. You know, right now, Dayton and Fortnite are down plates. That could be the difference between winning and losing a 50-50 situation, which is the difference between a team pushing you and a team not pushing you, which could be the difference between winning and losing the game. So you kind of see how all those things come together to ultimately, oh, plates. They figured it out. So they got plates. Now they're good to go. Now they're at least in a better situation to fight. And that's where they don't even have to buy a UAV, right? Just get to a point where... And he gets challenged there. He goes down. But luckily, his teammate Fortnite boy is there. Going for the quick res here, which is a little bit risky. But Dane's going to be able to get back up. Go ahead and great job repositioning here to behind cover to ultimately plate up. Now let's, let's see how... He's actually going to play this really well. He's going to use the head glitch, right? He's going to use the head glitch to peek. He's not there. Watch how, watch how he strafes with this person. Talk about the importance of strafing. He does a fantastic job here. He can peek this corner. He sees. Strafe, right? Strafe all the way around the corner. Let's go back and watch it again. Watch. Sorry, I paused it. I got excited. He's going to strafe all the way around the corner and then strafe back again. That little thing is going to throw this person off. That's also the downside of... Uh, of drop shotting for the other person, right? Dayton's able to mix in a few extra headshots there. Get the kill. Now, he's got two loadout guns. Probably would have grabbed the Milano before pushing up, but that's okay. He ends up getting the Bullfrog. Ends up being in a good spot here. At this point, there's one person alive. He has nine kills, so let's see if we can drop the 10-bomb. Great live ping there. I think that's the combat scout. Nope. Everybody died. So that was just a great live ping by his teammate. And Dayton does a great job. This is where spacing really helps. Let me pause right where I want it to be paused in terms of spacing. So notice the spacing here. One circle. I mean, they're, they have a good angle. This person really doesn't have that much cover. So you have two people here. Dayton's in a really good spot. And he's just going to hold this angle here. Hit the shots. Get the kill to finish it off. Get the 10 kills. Get the dub. So... Overall, really good game by Dayton in terms of hitting shots. It was a very quick game. Lobby was healthy for a while, but ended up dying out. Really good job by Dayton hitting shots. Of course, holding top control and using the positioning to his advantage. One thing I'd really like to see him do better is to start to have more of a plan. Start to understand kind of who you need to be pushing and where you want to be pushing to next. Just repositioning a little bit more. He did reposition well on top control, but obviously got a little bit complacent. That's why he ultimately got sniped in that scenario. So I hope you found this video helpful today. If you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Let's get better today, and I will see you tomorrow.